Hi folks, it's Crystalyn. So today I am going to show you all of the houseplants that I got while I was in Savannah. Um, so you saw most of them in the Savannah vlog, but I'm going to show you all of the plants that I bought and brought home with me. Um, so yeah, they're all here. Um, before we get into this video, I do want to show off this super cool shirt that I got. Um, the seller on Instagram is at the funnel cake tree and I will leave that down below in the description and it should also be on the bottom of the screen here, but it's a super cute shirt. It says send nodes. Haha, <laughs> get it. Um, and it has a Monstera Albo cutting or leaf on it. Um, so super cute. There's a lot of different colors and there are, um, I think hoodies and long sleeves available too. This is not at all sponsored, but I just thought it was a super cool shirt and the seller seems really dope. So I wanted to let you guys know about it. Before I start talking about the plants, um, I do want to let you know, you will see some doubles here. Um, that is because for a couple reasons, actually, um, some of the plants I've already started to divide up and put into separate pots. Um, that's because either um, I thought the pot or I thought the plant would look better split into smaller sections or um, just for experimentation purposes to see how well the plants survive if they're divided. Um, and I also bought a couple duplicates because I wanted to bring one home for my collection um, and then have one to either propagate, to trade, or um, just for some insurance because some of these plants I have not taken care of before. Um, so it's never a bad idea to have doubles in case one dies on you. So let's get into it. The first plant I want to talk about is this ogre ears plant. Um, and this plant was chosen by Margaret, whose nickname is Shrek, for those of you that don't know. Um, so when I told her that these were called ogre ears, she said that she had to get them. Um, and so if you look, you can see they sort of look like Shrek's ears. Not my girlfriend, but Shrek, the actual movie character. So this is a super cute plant. Um, this will be going to live with Margaret at her apartment. Um, along with most of my other succulents, just because I, um, I don't like succulents as much as I like, um, you know, aeroids and other things. Um, and she has more room at her apartment for them to live and get light. And they're not taking up valuable window space here at my apartment. So the next plant I want to show you is a plant that's not super rare but I have not been able to find it anywhere in the Atlanta area. So I was really excited when I was able to find one in Savannah. And it is this Philodendron Prince of Orange. Um, I think it is a super cool plant. I love how the leaves start out orange and then fade to green with some yellows and oranges in them. Um, this plant is already putting out a new leaf, which is exciting. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right there. New leaf is coming out. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about this. Um, I haven't done anything with this plant yet because it's putting out a new leaf and I don't like to disturb plants while they are putting out a new leaf. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting for that leaf to come out and then maybe I'll repot it. The next plant I want to talk about is one of the plants that I actually did divide. So these two plants were both in one pot, but I decided to split them up because, um, well, let me tell you what the plant is first. So this is an Alocasia poly. Again, not a super rare plant, but I have not been able to find it in the Atlanta area. Um, but there were two separate Alocasia plants in one pot and I split them up into two separate pots because I am just starting to get into alocasias and I am interested to see if this goes well. Um, so far they seem to be doing well, they handled the repotting. And I was also able to pull out some bulbs and put those bulbs in their own little mini pots. Um, so I am currently trying to root some alocasia bulbs as well. So that is also very exciting. The next plant is a plant that I only bought one of, um, but I did buy it with the hopes of learning to propagate it and um, also potentially maybe trading some cuttings of. Um, and that is this 
Hoya Linearis. Um, so I wasn't a big fan of Hoyas, but I'm starting to like them and I'm starting to learn more about them. And Hoya Linearis is a pretty cool plant because it's just um, like spaghetti, honestly. Um, and from the videos that I've watched about propagating it, it seems to be pretty easy to propagate. You can just propagate it in soil. And um, so yeah, I will probably take some cuttings of it to try to propagate and see how it goes. So my next plant is in several separate pots. Um, and that is because this plant was a plant that was being neglected um, by the shop owner and a little forgotten about. So I wanted to split it up into different pots and just see how that goes in the rehabbing process. So that is this four pot Hoya Crimson Queen. So I put one strand of the Crimson Queen into this pot, which is a more decorative pot, um, but this pot is actually really nice. It came with a drainage hole and a saucer, so I didn't have to um, make any adaptations to this pot before using it. Um, so I planted this one strand in because it was my favorite strand and so I wanted to put it in a nice decorative pot and it is staying in my bedroom um, and the rest of these plants are sitting in my greenhouse um, just because Hoyas like a lot of um, bright indirect light and um, I figured they could use the humidity as well. So yeah, I have that pot and then these three nursery pots with strands of Hoya Crimson Queen. Continuing on the Hoya list, um, clearly not so much of a Hoya hater anymore, which is probably a good thing. Um, this is a Hoya Crimson Princess. Um, the Hoya Crimson Princess and Crimson Queen, I have heard that you can get at your big box stores. Um, however, I have not been able to find any myself. So I was really excited to see these for very reasonable prices. Everything in Savannah was very reasonably priced um, plant-wise. And um, so I was excited to be able to pick this up. I have a small starter pot um, that I got with one of my um, Facebook plant purchases, um, but it's only two leaves. And so I was happy to find this pretty full pot of uh, Hoya Crimson Princess. So continuing with the Hoyas again, um, this is a plant that I did buy two of because this plant has been really hard to find in the Atlanta area. And um, I am hoping to make a really big full pot of it. Um, and the two I purchased are in six inch pots, but I would like to pot them up together um, and have just like a really big pot of this plant. So it is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta, um, otherwise known as the Hoya Rope, the Hoya Hindu Rope. Um, but yeah, so these are pretty full six inch pots, um, but I am pretty sure that this is a slow growing plant. So um, I did get two um, because I have been looking for this plant for a really long time. It is the first Hoya that I um, wanted and the Hoya that got me interested in Hoyas. So I'm really excited. I was super excited to find this. They had um, these two big pots and then they had some smaller pots. Um, so definitely more readily available in Savannah, but I was super excited to find them. Okay, so that is it for the Hoyas that I purchased. Um, now I'm going to show you another plant that I decided to divide. Um, because it was pretty full, but I thought, let's see how it works. Um, so this is a Calathea, and this Calathea was all in one pot. These are very big Calathea leaves. The Calatheas I have have much smaller leaves than this, but as I've said, I've been really lucky with Calatheas, and they seem to really like my environment. Um, that's probably because I keep them in my bathroom, which has the right amount of light for them, the right amount of humidity, and I don't know, I've been watering them with tap water, which apparently Calatheas aren't supposed to like, 
Um, but I do leave my tap water sit out so that it gets to room temperature and um, they seem to like it. I don't use bottled water or filtered water for them generally. Sometimes I do if I have, you know, some water left over at the bottom of my water bottle that um, I've been drinking. And sometimes I'll give them a little bit of that. Um, a little, nice little purified water as a treat, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so I split it up into two pots. Um, again, they are seemingly doing well. They are both putting out new leaves. I'm not seeing any major wilting or any drooping that wasn't there before I split them up. And I haven't had any browning yet, so. That's good. Is we are almost done. We have only about five more plants and most of them are small. So this next plant is also a plant I bought duplicates of. Um, I bought this plant because again, like this all around seems to be like a hard to find plant and I'm not sure why. Um, I have this plant already um, in a small pot but these two pots were super full and there was a ton of them so I decided to get two. Um, and this is one I am looking forward to learning how to propagate. Um, so yeah, this is a string of pearls. Um, so as I said, I already do have a string of pearls in a pot um, that I got from the farmer's market and I love it. It's been doing well. It's been getting the proper light, putting out new growth, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, but these pots were so full and they were only $10 each. So I thought that I would get two of them and um, I will be able to um, start trying to propagate them as they get longer. Um, I'll try some different methods of propagating them, water, soil, um, yeah, so um, if you're interested in String of Pearls, let me know because I am gonna be making some cuttings of this. Well, the next plant was um, kind of funny. Um, I was asking some questions to the workers um, about this plant and they didn't really have any answers, but I am pretty sure this is a ficus taniki. Um, it was labeled as rubber tree variegated and um, I'm almost positive that it's a ficus taniki, but a pretty immature version of it um, because the leaves are still very green and not woody like the ficus trees generally um, get. And there's not a ton of variegation on some of the leaves, especially the older leaves. Um, but the new leaves that are coming in are starting to get the cream variegation on the outside that is pretty characteristic of the ficus taniki. So it will be super interesting to see how that plant grows up. This next plant is the largest plant that I purchased in Savannah. Um, you can probably see it in the corner. It is this um, silver bay aglionema. Um, it's an aglionema. I'm not sure what kind. Um, I have not done anything. I have not done anything with this pot of this plant so far, but there are um, about four different plants in here. So I'm thinking that I am going to split it up so that I can spread it into different rooms and have multiple pots of this plant. So this is the last plant and it is my absolute favorite plant from my entire trip to Savannah. Um, this is a Monstera adansonii. It has this cute piece of wood as a support um, and it is, I, th I think this is the wide form Adansonii, which I am partial to compared to the narrow form um, because as I said in my houseplant tour, it looks more like an oblique, and I'm not going to get an oblique anytime soon. But yeah, so I got this plant from Stump. It was our last stop on the plant journey and it was the most adorable store. I had an amazing time um, just like walking through the store and looking at all of the plants. And um, it gave me some ideas for a plant shop that I would like to open in the future. Um, that's obviously way down the road. Um, but yeah, so this was my favorite plant that I got in Savannah. Um, I'm super excited about it. I have a very small pot of Adansonii that only has about four or five leaves that I got from the farmer's market. Um, so I was really excited to get this super full pot of it. Um, and I think it's just such a cool plant. Um, so yeah, so those are the plants that I got in Savannah. Um, 
I'm glad I got to show you some of the experiments that I am doing with those plants also and um, show you all the wonderful new plants that I have. I really didn't have most of these plants um, when I left for Savannah and that was what I wanted. I really wanted to expand my collection. Um, a lot of these, like the Hoya Carnosa Compacta, were wishlist plants of mine um, because I still have a lot of really basic plants on my wishlist because um, I don't I don't have a ton of plants yet. Um, so it was super exciting to find them um, just at nurseries and at super reasonable prices because I'm not paying $60 for a six inch pot of Hoya Carnosa Compacta even though I really wanted it. Um, and then to find some bigger versions of some plants that I already have, like this um, this Calathea with these really big leaves. Um, so let's see if I can take care of large-leaved Calatheas as well as I can take care of the Calatheas with small leaves. And that is about it. Um, so thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, and in the comments down below, um, let me know what your favorite plant is out of this selection of plants. Um, and let me know any other videos that you are hoping for me to do. And I hope you have a great week. Bye friends.